wisdom flows so sweet. Taste and see. Transmit. Initiate New England signal. Receive. Initiate the colored walk frequency. They started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossing. Initiate the Kynoderm syntax. Witness. Lady Margaret. There is a horror story bobbing in Kingsmith's Harbor. Its name is Lady Margaret. Listen. The story is encoded in seagull cries. The seagulls eat the bloated bodies, and in the alchemy of their bellies, those dead secrets fuse to the essence of the birds. Can you decipher it, sweetling? No? Those vestigial bits have not fully developed yet. Your skull is in its pupa stage, but they spasm when you hear the ranting of the galls. We can decipher. The gory story drips into the tides, one part per million, and still we can taste it. We will regurgitate it to you, feed you as a mama bird does. Initiate the seagull scream cadence. They thought the fishing boat lost. Then it returned to port weeks overdue. It brought no relief. It brought no comfort. It only brought the fog. A great storm cut the crew of the Lady Margaret. Twisting clouds and waves as tall as houses washing over the deck. Prayers were said, the final kind. The tempest beat the boat, and the crew scrambled to save their cargo. In their toil, a sudden swell washed a mate overboard. The rest watched helplessly as their fellow's head froze twice with the waves. There was no third time. The waters calmed, and the Lady Margaret remained. A thick fog crept in like a cancer. Mechanical madness. None of the instruments worked. The crew tried to maneuver the craft, but there were no bearings. No direction. No mercy from the sea. Off the compass. <clears throat> Off the map. Time passes, first in hours, then in days. The fog parted as a freak show curtain, revealing a graveyard of ships, rusty steel, ancient wood, dows, Viking longboats, modern frigates, oil tankers, and luxury cruise liners. They all dipped and bobbed in the same water. Vessels from all times, all cultures, all covered in red. What happened next, sweetling? Seagulls are compulsive flyers. Let us say an object was found floating on a driftwood raft. Let us say that a man designation Joe Slater dove in and brought it up. Let us say that at that moment the fog closed on the Lady Margaret with the purpose of a vampire squid's mantle. Perhaps the boat rotated, caught in the beginnings of a maelstrom. Perhaps the men looked upon the rotting hulks and saw the glistening movement of lean, slimy bodies writhing in red seaweed like undead otters cracking open skulls for their fruit. Perhaps the fog and the dark conspired to play tricks. 
there are fragments of older tales embedded in the seagull screams. Mariner's tales of things birthed in dead bodies and dark water. Putrid souls stippled with eel holes. These unquiet dead, these hungry dead, with their milk cataract stare. A few seagulls even remember the name. We can suppose the Lady Margaret fled both Maelstrom and monsters. The engine came back to life. Some instruments found lucidity. The boat made its way back to Kingsmith. The fishermen kept the strange object they found to themselves. Some argued to sell it on the internet. Others said it should be brought to Innsmouth Academy for identification. They decided to bring it to the esoteric school. The next day brought the fog. Time passes, first in screams, and then in moans. Joe Slater is the only one left. One by one, his fellows went away, like the deceptively vicious plot of a children's rhyme. Each is a tiny story in the belly of a different gall. And then there was Joe, but he is just barely Joe. Perhaps it was the object, or the primordial soup he swam through to get it, that passed on the fish oil leprosy. It started with stomach spasms that felt like writhing lamprey nests hatching in his belly. Then, Joe could hear the hagfish singing in the crushing depths. I could hear its siren song just, just calling me. <clears throat> Even when he pretended he could not. Even when the Q-tip snapped in half in his bloody ears. Madness bubbled in his brain like the bends. Then, pale flesh. Then... Barnacle sores and wriggling growths and sea cucumber discharges. Now, Joe feels the itch and burn as different species of coral battle for primacy of his chest, spitting up their digestive enzymes in time-lapse warfare. Something scuttles out of one body cavity to be eaten by something hiding in another. And though the seagulls scream a hundred thousand stories, all Joe can hear is... Consider subscribing on YouTube and following us on Twitter, it's free. Also consider buying us a coffee or becoming a Patreon patron, it's not free. All links are on our channel page. Thank you.